In this video, we'll be going over how to calculate the latitude and longitude coordinates of solar eclipses using the examples of Earth with the 2017 Great American Eclipse and all total solar eclipses for the next five years, as well as Jupiter's 2021 triple eclipse with Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. This video is building from the previous video and we'll go over more geometry since we are now assuming the eclipse body to be a sphere instead of a point mass. It'll also go over a root solver method with finite difference derivative estimation and frame transformations between inertial and planetary body face reference frames. So in the last video, we assumed that the eclipse body, which was a spacecraft, was a point mass. So all we needed to do in order to figure out if it was an eclipse was to compare the magnitude of the rejection vector to the radius of the cone at its projection to the sun vector. However, now we'll be assuming that the eclipse body is spherical, so we also need to account for the body's radius. So as we can see in the diagram here, the magnitude of the rejection vector is greater than the cone's radius, but part of the body is still in eclipse. So to account for this, we need to subtract the body's radius from the rejection vector, giving us this modified version of the equation from the last video. It's the same situation for Umbra, and note that the projection scalar minus Earth radius can actually be a negative number, which means the entirety of the eclipse cone is being projected onto the sphere. So in this new situation, we're going to add two new vectors to the analysis, where well, this red one here called R eclipse is going to be the vector from the center of the Earth to the intersection of the 3D cone onto the surface. And this is a vector that we ultimately want to calculate to then calculate latitude longitude coordinates from it. The magenta vector called R intersect is a vector pointing from the moon to that same point, And it is in the same direction as a sun vector, but has an unknown magnitude, which we'll call sigma. And the first thing to notice here is that the vector pointing from the moon to the earth and these two new vectors form a closed triangle so we can put the relationship in equation form by adding them tip to tail. We're going to rearrange the equation to isolate the eclipse vector. And we know that the R intercept vector is equal to the unit sun vector times the scalar unknown sigma. And the magnitude of the eclipse vector is equal to the radius of earth since we're assuming a spherical earth. So note that here, we know the direction of the intersect vector, but we don't know its magnitude. And for the eclipse vector, we know its magnitude, but not its direction. Next, we're going to take the norm of both sides of the equation and plug in our variables. And when we get to this point, we see that we have an equation with only one scalar unknown, which is a sigma value. Because we know the radius of the Earth, we know the sun vector, and we know the Earth vector. And now we'll rearrange the equation so we have all our variables on one side equal to zero. And if you're familiar with root solvers, this should be ringing your root solver alarm. Because what we have here is a scalar valued single variable function that we need to find the root of. It's scalar valued because its output is a scalar and single variable because it only has one variable that is changing, which is sigma. So we want to solve for what value of sigma is going to make this equation equal to zero, which we'll use to calculate the eclipse vector. So I should mention here that I doubt that this is the only way to solve this problem because intuitively it seems like there should be a more geometric approach that doesn't involve a root solver. But when working through this problem, I couldn't come up with a solution that involved just the vectors and maybe some trigonometry, but I found that this method worked for this problem, so I moved forward with it. But if you do know of another solution to this problem, please let me know. We'll quickly go over root solvers here, but if you want more details, I'll have a link in the description to another video where I go into more detail on them. So this plot is what the function looks like for a range of sigma values during the 2017 Great American Eclipse. And it's important to note here that this function has two solutions, but only one of them is correct for our purposes. The solution on the left is the one we want, and the solution on the right is the intersection of the path of the sun vector on the top right on the diagram. And also note that the minimum of this function occurs when sigma is equal to the magnitude of the projection vector. So what root solvers do, they take an initial guess of the answer, which is probably not the solution, and then use a derivative of the function at that point to guide them towards the root. So if we imagine we give an initial guess of 360,000 for sigma and follow the tangent line, which is the derivative all the way until we hit y equals zero, we actually get very close to the true solution. We then update our guess at the root with the sigma value that we got from when the tangent line got to y equals zero, and then we repeat that process until we converge. So in its general form, we can think of this process as calculating a linear approximation of our function, solving the linear approximation, and iterating until convergence. And this is a very important concept in numerical methods that can be applied to solve a lot of problems, including root solvers for multivariable functions and minimization of multivariable functions. 
For these types of root solvers, we need to be able to calculate the derivative of our function. In this case, we can use finite differences to approximate the derivative, and it still works. And this comes from the classic definition of the slope of a line, which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In our case, we'll use central differences to approximate the derivative, where we nudge sigma by some small value delta in the positive direction, evaluate the function, and subtract by the function with sigma nudged in the negative direction by delta, and then divide by 2 delta. And note that which root this solver will find is dependent on the initial guess. If we choose an initial iterate that is greater than the projection vector magnitude, the solver would follow the derivative to the wrong root. And we also don't want to use the projection as the initial guess because the derivative of a function at a minimum is zero. So the solver would follow the derivative to positive or negative infinity or some very large value. So instead, we can use the initial guess of the projection magnitude minus the radius of the Earth. And in this case, the solver converges within three to seven steps. Now that we know sigma, we can plug it in to calculate the eclipse vector. But this vector is in the EME 2000 inertial frame. But in order to calculate the latitude and longitude coordinates, we need to convert it to an Earth-centered Earth-fixed frame, which in this case, we'll use IAU Earth. In the SPICE kernel PCK00010.tpc, the IAU planetary body fix reference frames are calculated using 313 Euler angles, which are calculated using linear and trigonometric terms. So they also account for the nutation and precession of the body's spin axis, since those are not stationary in the inertial frame. So for example, Earth's spin axis precesses with a period of about 25,772 years. So the SPICE software system takes care of this calculation for us. So all we need to do is call the SPICE function PX form, giving it the frame that we currently have, which is the J2000 or EME2000 frame, the frame that we want, which is the planet's body fix reference frame and the ephemeris time of that calculation. And it will return us a rotation matrix that we then use to calculate the eclipse vector in that body fix frame. And once we have this vector, we can convert it to latitudinal coordinates using SPICE's RECLAT function, which takes in a 3D vector and returns a magnitude, longitude, and latitude. And that's our final answer. Implementing these functions and values in Python, we get these plots, which include the Great American Eclipse in red, that I actually got to see in person in Oregon, which was awesome. And I highly recommend if you ever have the chance to see one, you absolutely should because obviously this picture doesn't do it justice. And this also includes all solar eclipses for the next five years, where the next one is actually happening next week, 2021, December 4, over Antarctica. And all the dates for all the other eclipses are in the legend here on the top right. And here is an example of the 1996 IO eclipse in the red that Hubble actually got a picture of, which I'll have a link in the comments to go see it. On the bottom left is a screenshot from Cosmographia, not a real image. And then the triple eclipse, which happened earlier this year, 2021, August 15, of Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, which was also visible from Earth. In the next video, we'll go over the software, which will include an explanation as to why the root solver is in a tri-except, because in partial eclipse, the edge of the eclipse ray intersects Earth, but not the sun vector. So the check umbra function would return true, but the solver won't converge because it's using the sun vector. So let me know if you have any questions or comments about this one, and I'll see you in the next video.